Hello and welcome to another video. So, oh my god, you guys, guess what just came in the mail? <gasps> it's Chain of Iron and I am so, so, so excited to finally get to read this. I can't believe it's been almost a week, four days since it came out and I have managed to not get spoiled by anyone. So, oh. so yeah, I'm just gonna get into it. <laughs> Okay, little non-spoilery section for you guys right here. Very short. Um, all in all, I really <laughs> like the book. I feel like I would give this book either a 4.5 or a 5 out of 5 stars. And all in all, very good. It completely and totally wrecked me and all of my emotions. I have never wanted to pull my hair out so much reading a book, probably. So if that makes you want to read it, definitely check it out. And from now on, this is all going to be very, very spoilery. So you can leave if you don't want to be spoiled. Look at this, you guys. Even if you don't read the Mortal Instruments or Cassandra Clare books, I know most of you are here because of the Percy Jackson content. So you might not know this, <laughs> but uh, Rick Riordan and Cassandra Clare actually know each other i don't know if personally but in several books they have dedicated their books to one another because they borrow character names from each other she actually says for rick riordan thanks for letting me use the noble name d'angelo so the more you know okay so i actually went to look it up and in magnus chase and the gods of asgard look look at what i found to Cassandra Clare, thanks for letting me share the excellent name Magnus. So there you go, that's proof. So yeah, I really, really want to read the book. I don't know what I'm stalling, so I'm going to start the book, okay? No more excuses. I feel like Cassandra Clare and Rick Riordan are competing to see who can write more books in the same universe. Okay guys, so I did not give you any updates yesterday, that's just because I was uh, extremely lazy. So I'm actually on page 52, I'm about to start a Grace chapter, really not looking forward to that. And chapter wise, I think I really like Cordelia's and James, they're really entertaining. But right now, James mentioned that he was going to take off his bracelet before the wedding. And the bracelet is the whole thing that makes him believe that he's in love with Grace. So I'm wondering, can he do that, like physically, or does the spell prevent him from taking off the bracelet? And if it does, then won't he notice that there's something wrong with the whole thing? So that's what I'm hoping, because I really, really, really hate Grace. So I'm excited they mentioned it from like the start of the book, because I thought they were going to drag it on so long. So now I'm just gonna have like a nice morning where all I do is like sit on my couch and read honestly the best kind of morning he didn't remove the bracelet <sighs> okay so here's the thing there's like this love pentagon in this book and man it's so confusing I do not know who to root for because obviously there's grace and James and I obviously hate Grace so that's a no-go but I do really like James he's such an interesting character and I feel like we haven't really seen characters like that before in Cassandra Clare books so he's really refreshing he is in love with Grace but obviously that's just because of the spell but then he's actually in love with Cordelia and Cordelia she is an awesome character. I love her. She is incredible. And then we have Matthew, who is James's parabatai, who thinks at least that he is in love or at least very infatuated with Cordelia. And Cordelia and James are now getting married. Matthew is very distraught because he's seeing James uh, love Grace and they're going to meet privately before the ceremony which is the stupidest thing they could ever do i hate grace so much i hate her because she makes james a worse character and i really like him the worst part about him is that he is under her spell and then matthew with his whole alcohol thing like please the merry thieves need to have an intervention because we can't keep going this way obviously matthew gets drunk every time um he has to deal with James and Cordelia because it hurts to see them being like in love or at least pretending to be in love. But I don't know who I ship because I really like Matthew as well. And uh, I like Matthew and Cordelia, but James and Cordelia though, they're really nice. But also James and Matthew, 
<laughs> That's like a great love triangle. You know, they say the best love triangle is the one between uh, Tessa, Jem, and Will, but that doesn't go like all the way. But I feel like um, James, <laughs> Matthew, and Cordelia, they're just like, they could be OT3, you know? They could be a good OT3. They are my OT3. <laughs> just parapetize in general have such good chemistry that you're like, why don't they just date? She was going to release him from the spell and tell him the truth, but then the Tatiana just had to interfere. The dudes didn't even go. <sighs> this book is going to be so frustrating. I'm sorry, but how is every single character in this book so dumb? How have they not noticed, like at least Cordelia or James or one of their friends, that Matthew is head over heels for Cordelia? It's so freaking obvious. Jeez. <laughs> what a frustrating book. Poor James has so many pent up feelings and emotions towards Cordelia because of his curse that I feel like he's just going to explode like one day. Like too many feelings that he can't express or understand and he's just going to explode. Like this poor guy, that scene where he was helping her uh, undress because she couldn't do all the buttons herself, man, <laughs> poor guy. And I hate to say it, I really do, but Cassandra Clare is like a master at building tension, romantic tension between two characters. Man, what a scene. I can't believe it's been 150 pages and the actual plot hasn't like started. All we've been doing is following these characters around and like Cassandra Clare has really, really, really focused so far on establishing their relationships and their dynamics, and that's fun to see. Nothing has happened. The conflict has not yet started. All we get is the conflict of the love triangle or love square. Uh, also, the tension in here is so high you could like cut through it with a knife. And I, I have never wanted uh, a couple to make out more than I have with uh, Cordelia and James. Maybe with Julian and Emma. Those two were very, very frustrating as well. That's just, I feel like that's what Cassandra Clare is doing lately. And I know I love slow burn, but sometimes, man, there's so much tension that I just want something to happen. Okay, so I think after that last update, I read a little bit more last night and I actually got to page 162 and I got so tired that I had to leave it there. But uh, the plot, it seems, is finally starting to pick up after two murders and a lot of socializing, things are starting to happen. And I am glad because I like the socializing, but uh, I, want, I want more fights, more action, you know, uh, more plot in general. So I'm really excited for that. I was also examining the cover last night while I was um, procrastinating reading the actual book. And I noticed the locket, um, this is Lucy, by the way, and that's the locket that holds, that held Jessie's last breath in it, and now she carries all the time. But, um, I thought these were bumblebees, but they're actually moths, I think. And Lucy actually mentions moths throughout the book, but I forget in what context. So I think that, um, unlike the other cover uh, that shows Cordelia with leaves in her hair, uh, that doesn't really come into account. Maybe the moths do come into account. Will they use some kind of, like, magical moth extract to resurrect Jesse. I don't know, drawing like a lot of lines here. I've like connected the dots. Yeah, just really excited to keep reading and have things finally happen. Also, I just woke up, so let me get ready. Ready. Okay, so now that I'm all dressed and ready to start the day, I think I'm going to spend my morning uh, both reading and editing this video so I can hopefully get it up by this Friday. So wish me luck. Today's objective is to find a plot in this book. They, uh, they're 
are so dumb. How are they so <laughs> dumb? Both Cordelia and James, man, this is driving me freaking nuts. <sighs> They're so dumb, especially James. Every time something romantic between them happens or something like physical, moments later he's like, oh my god, it must have mortified Cordelia. <laughs> Like, dude, she's totally, like, dying to get in your pants. Why are you, why do you think she hates it? She's, like, clearly so in love with you and so attracted to you. And James is over here, like, oh my god, I must have made her feel uncomfortable. And, like, are you, how are you that dense? How are you that dumb, James? Please. Oh god. They're so frustrating. I mean, I love their scenes. They're very steamy without being steamy at all, which is so weird. Like, ugh, please, this is like the epitome of blue balls. I just found our second Percy Jackson reference. Memories of his dream were pouring into his mind like water through a smashed dam. Oh my god, guys, the plot is finally picking up and we are having our first actual, like, good action sequence and I was wondering before uh, when Cordelia and James were leaving the party and uh, they were at attacked kind of Will was attacked by like a wheel demon or something Cordelia reached for uh, Cortana and it burned her hand and then they didn't even mention anything about that and then they mentioned again the new I think it's called the scarab where she keeps the the sword now and that was a present from her dad and I'm thinking this that have to do with it is her dad like manipulating Cortana so that Cordelia can't use it is Elias being manipulated by Tatiana because Tatiana really hates James and Cordelia and the only thing keeping um I forget what his name is the Prince of Hell that's James's grandfather that guy from getting to James is that he's protected by Cordelia and Cortana so our Tatiana and the Prince of Hell uh, they, they control Elias in some way to get him to find the scarab and gift it to Cordelia so that uh, it would affect Cortana and now in this fight scene she tried to reach for Cortana and it I don't know it didn't burn her hands but it sends like a shock of pain through her palms and she dropped it so is that is that it Poor Cordelia, because seeing Cordelia being such a badass with Cortana is one of my favorite things from this book series, so uh, please let this, let this end so she can go back to being a badass with her badass sword. Well guys, it's finally official. I hate Elias Carstairs. He's the worst. Like, why are there so many hateable people in this book and uh, he just asked James for 5,000 pounds which is a lot now but was even more back then and he has the nerve to call him selfish when he tells him no and he referred to his unborn child as another brat to feed I hate him I hate him he's the worst I hope Cordelia sees that also, if they use this as a misunderstanding to create some sort of bad tension between Cordelia and James, I will be so mad. Okay, so I just got to the chapter titled London Shepherd Market, and it was, I think, the fourth kill of this murderer that we were looking for. Okay, so the person that the murderer murdered, uh, when they saw the murderer, they said, you. So that makes it sound like it's someone we know. So maybe... It's someone being possessed and doing all these things because I thought the body just like came out of nowhere because it says it's getting stronger. So it could either be two things that um, someone recognized the demon as the prince of hell or whatever or that the prince of hell or the demon or whatever this is is possessing someone that someone else or at least this person who was murdered knows. So my theory that I don't want to be true is that is James being possessed every night and is he going around London killing shadow hunters? Because he gets dreams about all the murders and he wakes up knowing 
everything about it. So please tell me he is not sleepwalking committing these murders. <sighs> he said his preferred weapons are knives and the murderer uses knives. I just connected those two things and I'm not happy about it. Oh my god, please tell me it's not James. I don't want it to be James. Like someone in the house would have noticed him like slipping away every night, but he can shadow travel. I mean, he can teleport through that weird dimension thing. Oh my god, please let it not be James. The poor boy has enough on this plate right now. He can't be possessed by a demon and also under a spell by um What's her face by Grace? That would be too much for the poor guy. Guys, I think it's coming true because he just mentioned the windows. Every time he wakes up, one of the windows is open. And this time it was Elias. <laughs> I shouldn't be this happy because it is Cordelia's dad and he just stabbed him to death, but at least something good is happening. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cordelia, but... Mm. Okay, so Elias is dead, which is kind of... A bit underwhelming because they made him out to be like this huge villain and Cassandra Clare just killed him like we're not even at page 300 I thought he was going to have more of an impact on the story maybe he's dead but the thing with the scarab will come out later or maybe it's a fake out death but it, it, it looked like he was dead and they're going to the silent city so I don't know I thought he was going to have more of an impact I'm still waiting for the Scarab thing. I, I want the Cortana thing to be resolved ASAP. <sighs> okay, guys. The scene between Cordelia and Matthew in Cordelia's room where Matthew finally tells her what happened with his mom because of Alistair's rumors. That was a really nice scene. It was really cute. And it's hard not to ship them. But uh, I know that even though it might seem to Matthew that Cordelia might have feelings for him, we as the audience know that she is head over heels for James and I don't think that's going to change and I don't think she could fall in love with Matthew when she's already in love with James. She's not that kind of person. I know she's not doing it on purpose but Matthew is getting his hopes up. Man, I can feel it and it's so <laughs> sad. This is going to be painful. So I was wrong, surprisingly. The scabbard was not the thing making Cortana act so weirdly. Um, it was actually a good thing. It's a good present, so I was wrong about Elias. Hmm. So our boy James told Cordelia about the kiss, and because this is a book, and not just any book, like a Cassandra Clare book, uh, Cordelia's reaction was obviously, oh, so maybe we should make out and you should teach me how to kiss properly. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Uh, I loved it. It was a great scene. Uh, a little bit frustrating, but we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. They're finally, like, actually realizing what the other feels for them. Like, at least a little bit. And, you know... I never thought I would um, miss makeout scenes in Cassandra Clare books, but man, these ones are like not as abundant as in her other series. She's making us work for them, which is weird for a Cassandra Clare book, in my opinion. I don't really remember a lot of them, but still, what, what a great scene. Iconic. Good morning. So today I am actually spending my morning editing instead of reading because guys i still have i think more than 200 pages to go about 200 pages to go and this reading vlog is already 24 minutes long so okay so i just finished editing that part of the video and now i'm gonna update you on what happened yesterday because i did read a little bit more before I'm going to bed and basically what happened is that one, uh, James was confirmed to not be the killer, and two, the Clabe and most of the Shadowhunters now think that Thomas is the killer because Thomas was a dum dum and he went out on patrol by himself and then got caught with the body of a woman that was just murdered. Thomas, I thought you were the sensible one in the group. I can't believe you were such an idiot, 
but at least Alistair was there. I don't really like ship them because Alistair is kind of toxic. I get him now and I don't want them to hate him as much, but I also don't like his relationship with Thomas though, so I don't know. So that's basically what happened. Now Alistair and Thomas are both in jail in the sanctuary and they're just waiting for Will and Tessa to come back with the Mortal Sword so they can find out what happened. And I think that's mostly everything. Oh, also Matthew and James had kind of a fight in the shadow market. So that was interesting. Let's see if that takes us anywhere uh, with Matthew's alcoholism. Someone has to address it in order to fix the problem. You have to address it first. And apparently no one wants to, which makes no sense because it's clearly there. But I, I hope that gets addressed and they help Matthew because he needs help. Please get this boy a therapist. Also, who do you guys think is going to be in the next cover? Because the first cover was Cordelia, and the second cover is obviously Lucy. So what we're seeing is a pattern of women with their backs turned to the audience and long flowy hair. So the other important female characters for now have been Anna Lightwood, who has short hair, so she wouldn't match the other covers. And then I guess Grace, I don't really don't want to see her on the next cover, but I, I can't fathom who else it could be. So please let me know your theories down below about who's going to be on the next cover, because I really don't want it to be Grace. <sighs> it broke, you guys! The bracelet! finally broke and I stopped reading just as that happened. So I'm guessing, I'm really really hoping here that that means the spell is over forever and now it seems that we're getting a steamy scene, a proper steamy scene like we have not had before so I am ready. No, it didn't happen. Like two paragraphs after my last update, James just like, he gets knocked unconscious, ugh. <laughs> like I've been waiting for more than 400 pages for this. <laughs> and it like, we got cock blocked again, man. That's the definition of this book. And <laughs> also I forgot to mention it earlier, but um, I had a feeling that Cassandra Clare would pair off Henry with Grace, which is the most unnecessary thing I have ever read. It hasn't happened, so maybe they're just going to be like friends that understand each other and have a mutual love for science. But if everyone in the friend group ends up paired up with someone at 17, I get now why Cassandra Clare and Rick Pryor didn't get along because they have this feeling that if, if not everyone in a friend group is paired up together, then uh, then they're useless and they shouldn't exist. And uh, don't worry, it will happen at the end of the series. <sighs> why can't they just be friends? They are 17. <laughs> oh my god, Cassandra Clare just dropped a gigantic bomb on us. Was it Jesse the one murdering all those shadow hunters? and stealing the runes for himself? Was he doing it unconsciously? <gasps> because he always did it right when it was like near dawn and Jesse can only have his ghost form during the night when it's dark. So right when the ghost goes back to his body, his body is going out and killing shadow hunters. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> so, so Jesse is coming back to life, it seems like. If Jesse was evil all along and he was using Lucy to bring him back and be evil, if he is not being possessed, I am going to be so freaking mad. Also, I forgot to mention this, but I am really proud of Lucy for doing what's right and trying to kill Jesse's body um, in spite of herself and her own feelings towards him uh, to save the world, you know? That made me like her character so much more. I actually watched a live show with Cassandra Clare and three booktubers interviewing her, talking about this book, and she said there's not like a cliffhanger, but there's like an emotional cliffhanger and something that really hurts you emotionally. So I'm not looking forward to that, but I guess we'll find out what they were talking about 
real soon. Hey guys, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but Grace is the worst. So apparently Cordelia swore loyalty to Lilith and not to Wayland Smith. <laughs> Things are going well. I, I'm going to cry. I don't think I've ever read a more exasperating book in my life. This is so frustrating. James is in love with Cordelia. He finally admits that. He can finally feel his own feelings and he's about to tell her, but the idiot phrases it in the worst way possible, making Cordelia think that he never felt anything, any kind of love towards her. And then when he said, when he said, go to my room, I will talk to you and we will talk about this later. I was like, it's not gonna happen. And whenever someone says, go somewhere, wait for me and we'll talk about it, it never happens. It never happens ever in any kind of media, in books, in shows or movies, it never happens. And seconds after they say that, someone knocks on the door or appears from somewhere or they get killed and Grace just appeared at the door. I, we still have 40 pages left. I thought we were, I thought the battle was gonna start like with 50 pages left. But the battle is over and we still had 70 pages left. I don't know what's happening. I don't understand. I am. Um, <laughs> I have too many feelings right now and I, I don't understand them. I just know I'm very freaking frustrated. Cordelia saw James with Grace and run away. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. But I... It still hurts so much. They're such idiots. This book is so frustrating. <laughs> I don't think there's a silver lining in this. I think it's going to end up badly for at least someone. What I want to happen, ideally, is that James figures out that Cordelia is at Matthew's. He gets there and they make up. He actually tells her how he feels and clears up the misunderstanding. And the one hurt is Matthew instead of me. I, I don't want to do that to Matthew, but if I have to choose between either of us getting hurt, I'd rather it be him. If it's gonna be bad, I'd rather not know, but I'm just gonna push through, push through the pain and see who gets hurt. Leave your comments down below. Who do you think will get hurt, Matthew or me? Let's find out. The deed is done. So I finished the book and now is the last chance you guys have to place your bets down below and see who was hurt. Uh, it's either me or Matthew. And it was me. <laughs> It was me. <laughs> but I was wrong. There is a silver lining that I had um, not foreseen. And that is that I really, really like Matthew. So the fact that he is going to be able to reach some semblance of happiness and sobriety is making me happy, despite the fact that him leaving with Cordelia to go to Paris means that James is going to be miserable. I guess it means that even though James is miserable, it could be worse. Matthew and Cordelia could both be miserable as well. But at least now they will be able to help cheer each other up. So, I mean, it's a lesser evil from my point of view. So, so that's why I, I am trying to come to terms with it. I literally just finished it and I'm still super salty. Let's talk about Lucy, uh, please, let's talk about her because I forgot to mention before, she is being so annoying. I didn't really care about her chapters before, I didn't care about her with Jessie, I mentioned that before, I think, but now she's being so freaking annoying. Why are you so freaking determined to save, not even to save, he's already dead, to bring him back to life, knowing it's wrong, he's not even related to you, you've known him for four months. And you're in love with him, which is fine and everything, but you were like you were ready to kill him before. And I was like, now I'm liking Lucy more. Well, now I'm liking Lucy less because she she literally left her whole family. She's the reason why James didn't catch up to the train and told Cordelia how he felt. Why is she being like this? Why is she doing this to me? I don't even care about the ending, the epilogue with Tatiana leaving the Iron Sisters, like, who cares? All I cared about were James and Cordelia, and now that's ruined. Oh my god, guys, if this misunderstanding between Cordelia and James, like, if we spend more than the first 50 pages of the next book exploring that, I am going to write a very strong worded email to Cassandra Clare, because that that's not alright. 
if it's not resolved like within the first third of the book i'm going to cry so much I, my hair will fall out of frustration so so that was my time uh reading chain of iron if you've made it this far you probably can tell that it was a lot of fun what a what a fun five days it's been it's been a journey let me tell you that um what do i give it i think my heart wants to give it zero stars because it, it was very painful. But at the same time, the fact that it managed to be that painful and that gripping of a story meant that at least it made me feel a lot of things, which is what I usually relate to a good read. So I'm between a four and a half stars and a five stars. I don't know yet. I think I have to sit with the book a bit more and maybe in like a few days. I'll be able to give it a final ranking. Uh, what I do know is that this is going to put me in a massive book hangover because I can't just leave these characters yet. Like, I'm still inside this world. I'm still, like, my mind is filled with these characters. My heart is full of these characters right now, so I can't just pick up something else, especially something inside a series. So I don't know, I might pick up a contemporary. Might have to wait, like, a week <laughs> to mourn. But I don't know. I hope that was a fun video for you guys to watch. To watch me slowly descend into madness. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, I really need that right now. And yeah, if please subscribe if you haven't yet. And click that bell button so you get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos every Mondays and Fridays. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!